Hi, today I'm going to teach you about a Google extension called Kami. Kami is a PDF annotator. My second grade students have used this extension to highlight words that belong to specific word families. They've highlighted order words and most recently are highlighting context clues that help them figure out the meanings of their weekly vocabulary words. So an obvious literacy skill required to use Kami would definitely be that they need to read a second grade passage. Before students will be able to use Kami, they will need to have access to a PDF. Typically in my class, a Kami assignment will start as an email extension sent to each student. They will then save that PDF to their Google Drive. However, you can also get a PDF from Box, Dropbox, or use one from your own files. So I'm going to go ahead and open up Kami now. And to do that, you'll find your apps up in the corner and click on the Kami app. Here you can see is where you have the options of how to get your PDF. So you can click here to get one from your desktop. You can Here's your Google Drive, your box, your Dropbox. And down here are some recent ones that if maybe you were working on one and you had to stop, you could find it right there. Today we're going to go ahead and we're going to go to Google Drive. Um, one of the things that I have taught my second graders, because our Google Drives can tend to get kind of full and it's a little bit of a a process to find something that you're looking for, I have them search specifically for anything with a PDF. So I put .pdf in the search, hit return, and then all of the PDFs that I have sent them will come up. So we're going to use this one today. Okay, so this is an example of a PDF. It's right in the middle. Now over here on the left are all of your tools. So let's go ahead and talk about the tools. The first tool is the highlighting tool. Um, and just so that you know, if you look down here, it will always tell you what tool you're in. So if you want to highlight, and then this gives you all the different colors, the first thing you'll do is you go down to your arrow so that you're able to select text. And let's see, maybe one of the questions was highlight the author. So they would find the author, highlight it, Click on the highlight button, color, and as soon as you let go of your mouse, it's there. So um, the one thing I like about this is that if you make a mistake, you don't have to like panic and delete everything. If you hover over it, you have an opportunity here to fix things. So the X obviously will delete everything. I can make a comment. Um, if, if let's say they, when I said highlight the author, they highlighted the title instead. So I could say, um, nice try, but this is the title. Um, please look below to find the author. So you could make a comment on that. Um, also, as I highlight, or as I hover over this, it's not going to let me now. That's okay. All right, so let's go to the next one. The next one is the strike through, and so that would just put a line through something. Um, I could see us using that if we were maybe using um, a PDF of one of our writings, if we made our writing into a PDF and we did some um, proofreading of it, we could strike through any of the words that we did not want to have in there. The next one is the underlining tool, and we've used that one too. Um, we've used it to find synonyms, and again, it's the same thing. You can highlight, you can underline in any color. You just go over it, let go, and the underline is there. Again, if you decide you don't like what it is, you can also go up and just hover over it, and then your new toolbox toolbar will show up there. I really like this one. And the one I, what I like to do with this is sometimes I will annotate a passage and then send it out. And what this does is you can, you can see here, I've made a dot and to that dot is a comment. So here's where you could really practice making connections. You might, you could ask a question here. Um, we've been working on cause and effect. And so I, maybe I put a dot, please tell me what the effect is 
or what was the cause in this sentence. So this one really, um, I really like this one so that they can. And then you can see that I have put this. And so if they wanted to write a reply to me, they could. They could tell me right then in my, where there in my comment, um, the answer to the question or, or whatever I was asking them. Um, the next tool is the actual text tool. And so basically you can just come right on here. Excuse me. And click on it, and we I could ask why are these words capitalized cap? And so then they could they can see this question and they could go, they could make a comment over here and answer me. Um, maybe they have a question about something and they want to remember it right then and there. They could ask that question right there. This is the paintbrush and basically it's a drawing tool. And so the only thing about this is it draws really, really thick at first. So if I wanted to um, draw a picture or draw a circle around that, nice circle I know, I can come up here and then I can make it much thinner. Um, but it does have, it's thick at first. So if they have a question, maybe they don't know what this word is right here, they could right away put a question mark right next to it and then make it a little bit thinner so we can still read it. And there's the question. So now I know that they were unable to read this word. Maybe they have something they don't um, understand. Maybe they have something that they really, really connected to. They could put a star. I have neighbors that have asked for help before. And so here's that star and that could be a connection. There are lots of annotating um, toolboxes that will tell you like a star means this and this um, underlying that. We have not used one of those in second grade yet because we're still just working on learning how to, to work this program first. Um, this is the, these two modes right here are only if you have the, um, the upgraded version that you have to pay for. Here's the eraser. So if I want to erase something, I just kind of go over it and it will erase it. So you can see there. And then, like I said, this is your text finder. So you can go back and highlight and do whatever you need to. Um, the nice thing that I like about this is that kids can then save it. Also, I don't know if you notice this up here, but anytime I make a change, it's automatically saved. So the kids do not have to go back and save, remember to save it. It's one less step for them to do. Um, so because annotating is a way for me to be able to see how kids are thinking, what I can do is I can have them export. You could have them print, but since my kids use Chromebooks, they don't have access to printers. So what we'll do is we'll export the file. And so when you export the file, I always have them export it to Google Drive. That way we can pull it up anywhere we need to. And then you have three options. You can just um, do the original PDF without any annotations on it. You can do the, you can save it just like you saw it. So the annotations would be on the PDF and everything, or you can save it with the annotations to the side. Well, I always have them do the annotations on top because I want, like I said, I want to see what they're thinking. So then once you've decided to do that, you begin the export process. It looks like it's taking a little bit longer. And there it is. And then when you hit, you can open it in Google Drive. And I go to recent because then that will show you the most recent activity. And there it is. And then all they have to do is share that with me. And then I have access to their thinking and I can see how, um, how they did that. Um, you can see that it has endless possibilities. As long as students are able to navigate through Google Drive, highlight with a mouse, use text boxes, and can do a little bit of typing, you this annotating um, extension can really help your students show what they know. Thank you.